that you're about to see are based on the national debt crisis. The national debt that is going on and how it affects me, as well as how do I think it affects the world in general. Uh, we're living in a you know diverse and interconnected world. Um, and to be honest, I think the uh, national debt only affects, uh, economically speaking, you know, common folks, right? Interest rates are going up as well as, you know, the national debt is generally growing faster than the ec economy. And a lot of people think that debt is normal. Les Ledger, I teach at Central Texas College. Before that, I ran my own business for 39 years. And the only way I know to talk about national debt is to look at it. And we need to look at it all the time because it's growing. As you can see on the left part of the screen, the national debt is growing astronomically. The left is the red, it shows the debt. And on the right side of the screen, it says United States tax revenue. As you see, we are far behind in trying to generate enough income and income tax to pay off this national debt. Now, what effect does it have? Well, for me, it has nothing because it's going to be something that my sons, the three of them, and my grandchildren, the eight of them, are going to have to pay off because I'll be gone. But what we need to take cognizant of is the fact that our national debt continues to grow. And what is most interesting is that we have 535 senators and members of the House of Representatives that dictate how this national debt is going to be spent. And they have no concern that I can see about the revenue that it's going to take to pay this off. I'll just give you a hint about looking at this from a business viewpoint. Let's say that I was going to run my business on borrowed money, such as, let's see if I can do this, $28 trillion. And I was borrowing money from everybody that I could. But if I looked over at the right side, over at the revenue that I was taking in, I'm only taking in $3 trillion. Now, any banker will tell you that he, she, it, they cannot fund a business that continues to lose money as our government continues to lose money. Okay, if you can't tell my dialect, I'm from Texas. And so I'll tell you this about Texas government. Our members of the Senate and the House of Representatives cannot end their year in the meeting in the legislature without a balanced budget. And what they do when they can't balance their expenditures by their revenue, they go in and they start cutting programs. And we may have to do that. Some of that's going to hurt. For instance, maybe we pay more for going to a national park. Maybe we uh, have to add more taxes to our corporations and to our individuals. And if we do that, folks, there are going to be some breaks that are put on our economy. Again, I'm looking at this from a business viewpoint. I could not, as a banker, I could not, as a private lender, continue to fund an organization which does nothing but lose money every nanosecond. All right, a little hardcore, but folks, I was in business for myself, and I faced this situation when I wasn't making enough money and had to borrow money. Certainly be passed on from suppliers to consumers. I would uh, anticipate a continued rise in the prices of gasoline to the pump have different views depending on whether you think taxation is a positive or negative factor. Uh, what I've noticed, you know, from 2008 when the Great Recession, one of the recessions, I should say, uh, we pulled ourselves out probably, I want to say, maybe 2014, 2015. Um, it took a while, um, and after the bank bailouts, I figured that we understood the logic and the statistics. Unforeseen circumstances, it just seems to get a little worse and worse. Um, after COVID-19, well, we're still in COVID-19, I believe it's testing us beyond our limits. Through time, major increases have occurred when there have been significant national efforts, such as war, um, spending uh, on the military, certainly increase incrementally, substantially, um, the national debt.
Uh, the national debt has been a part of this country, country's operations since the beginning of time. You know, the United States government first found out, um, found itself actually in debt in 1790, and that was right after the Revolutionary War. But since then, um, the debt has been fueled over the centuries by um, wars, by economic recession, by currently the COVID-19 pandemic and the CARES Act um, have added you know, to our national debt. Um, because of the rising debt and deficits um, is le led to, I've noticing higher interest rates. So I've been watching the interest rates personally for a couple of reasons. Um, but I've noticed that every time I log on to my bank, I've noticed that my interest rates as far as loans are concerned go up. But as far as my bank account, um, like my savings accounts, they're actually going down. The money that the government's giving me. Interest rates. And also so, even paying your college tuition, you're going to see higher interest rates. But this also doesn't, it also affects things like our credit cards. Um, it affects buying gas. Um, and groceries that so impacted here. me was higher taxes. Um, so whenever the government can't make revenue through typical means to pay off the debt, um, in return, what they do is they raise taxes. Well, for consumers, that affects us, right? Um, and if you own property, higher taxes. Um, so those are things that I guess when I had to start adulting, <laughs> I go back to that. Um, but when I had to start adulting is really when um, the national debt became part of who I am as an individual and the choices that I make. My name is Crystal and I hope these videos were able to shed light on the national debt crisis in America. Remember, it's